York theater community continuing to embrace inclusivity, showcasing a growing group of diverse talents, people of all colors, orientations, and those with disabilities. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. Today, I'm excited to get to know Michael Patrick Thornton and Ryan J. Haddad. Ryan's up first. He's actually right over here at the Historic Public Theater premiering his new play, Dark Disabled Stories. We are at the Public Theater. This is like, I, I know you're a real yes. theater fan. This yes. is an institution. Of course. Think about course. all the musicals that started here. I mean, hair. I mean, a chorus line. I mean, fun homes. And now we are doing and now, decidedly not a musical. Dark Disabled Stories. So can we go inside and chat a little bit about this? I hope this? so, because it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of cold. We should go inside. People know you for being very funny. Hi, are you single? Hi, are you single? Hi, are you single? This time, you aren't leaning so so much on the humor. You've been telling your story uh, as a openly gay man with cerebral palsy as they're navigating the city. Growing up in Ohio, Haddad fell in love with Broadway divas, show tunes, and a glamorized image of New York City. That sort of cotton candy version of what the city could be yeah. did not in any way prepare me for the actual reality of trying to get from point A to point B and back again and not spend a million dollars on cars because the subway is a treacherous mess. The city is, is intense. And so these stories in this play are intense as a, as a sort of mirror to that. I came with my Aunt Janice to see the revival of Ragtime in 2009. It was the first time that I sort of publicly fell in New York within two seconds there were five complete strangers just lifting me off the ground. And that almost always happens. So this play is about strangers that you meet when you think you're alone in a city where you're never truly alone. Dark Disabled Stories started as a solo show, but Haddad is now joined on stage by two co-stars. Deaf artist Dickie Hartz appears as his alter ego, performing the show in American Sign Language, while Alejandra Espina, who has cerebral palsy and uses a wheelchair, offers audio descriptions for theatergoers who are blind or have low vision. Look, it's lonely up there by yourself, so you have yeah. some co-stars. Yeah. And I believe, isn't it also op open captioning? Mm -hmm. So, which means that it's captioned on the set, which I appreciate as someone who's yes. hard of hearing. So it is open captioned, audio described, and then we have Dickie playing Ryan alongside Ryan, who is also playing Ryan, and he's doing it in ASL. What do you want people to know about living with cerebral palsy? Primarily that when I get up in the morning, it's just not right. at the top of my mind. The top of my mind is, am I gonna be late? Or does the boy I have a crush on also have a crush on me? And then I step out into the world and am reminded, oh, okay, you've gotta move a little slower. Mm -hmm. That is when it sort of becomes the narrative. With his acclaimed stage performances and a memorable turn on Ryan Murphy's The Politician, Haddad is living out his childhood dream. That little boy wanted wanted to be on Broadway. And that big boy still wants to be on Broadway, but sort of has recalibrated the way in which I might arrive mm -hmm. there. You know, I don't think I'm a dancer, and I'm not gonna pretend to you that that's my strong suit. I'm not, dance 10 looks three. I would say looks 10, dance like negative six. I'm not a 10, I don't think that, maybe a seven, <laughs> maybe a seven. <laughs> As Haddad went back into rehearsals, I headed to the Hell's Kitchen home of Michael Patrick Thornton, who just opened opposite Jessica Chastain in A Doll's House. Last season, he made his Broadway debut in the Daniel Craig-led Macbeth. Thank you for having me in your home. Thank you for coming to my home. Are you getting used to working on Broadway? I've had this dream since I was a kid. I remember like rehearsing Tony and Oscar speeches in my shower when I was like nine years old. I wish I could kind of go back in time, like tap that kid on the shoulder and be like, hey, Everything you dream about is going to happen. You're just not going to believe what you're going to have to go through to get it. When you were 24 is when you had two spinal strokes. Two because the first was just so much fun that my body was like, let's do that again. Yeah, yeah, it's just crazy. It's a very medically anomalous thing. It's like an episode of Dr. House, which turned a, you know, 24-year-old knucklehead into uh, incomplete quadriplegic on a ventilator within a matter of an hour and had to teach myself how to basically breathe and talk again. Even through the darkest days, Thornton knew he wanted to continue to follow his dreams of being a working actor. So what was it like 
actually getting out there and auditioning and it's horrible. You're going back to the same casting director offices, but you can't enter through the front door because there's two steps. So now I have to go to the alley, going up a ramp that's completely rusted through, riding up in a freight elevator with spilled Coca-Cola so that my wheels are sticky and I smell like garbage when I, by the time I get into the room to try to get a job and be confident. It was hard. Thornton especially enjoys playing characters that traditionally don't use a wheelchair, like Dr. Rank in A Doll's House. My long-term strategy has been to do stories where the wheelchair is not a plot point. Right. You force people to simply accept you as a human being. What is it like sort of navigating New York City? I had this thing that I clip onto my chair that lifts my two wheels off the ground and turns the wheelchair into an electric trike, basically. And I make it to, to work in five minutes. Broadway operates in very small, old buildings. Really? For the most part. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. The entrances and exits are tricky if you're a wheelchair user. They've installed a stair chair, kind of like the uh, motorized chair, like in Gremlins 2, that the person signed, I love you know? That that's your reference. Of course it is. And I think it's actually the same one Ali Joker used for Oklahoma. It's tough, because as you said, the spaces are so small, but um, they have to have uncomfortable conversations to see how we can make this, you know, a, a little more easier on the next generation. I mean, is that really just the key for everyone, just better communication? I think there's a tendency sometimes to talk about disability and people who are disabled as if we kind of all you know, show up at the, at the VFW hall once a month and get the talking points and agree. And at the end of the day, people are people, you know? And so we might have some commonalities with each other, but it's, it's, we're on our own little journey.